Oh, yes, it is working. Okay, my preview was off. Hey, guys, welcome. Good to see you. Let's turn on Periscope. Let's get to church. Hey, everyone. Glory to God. So good to see you all tonight. I hope that you are ready for a phenomenal week. Hey, Crystal, it's so good to see you on the live. Have not seen you in so long. Glory to God. I decree and I declare that as your woman of God comes on this broadcast, I come into agreement with you that every stronghold on your life is broken in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to have a conversation with you tonight. Tonight, tonight, tonight. We will be naming what we are nurturing. We'll be, we will be naming what we are destroying in the name of Jesus. We will let the Holy Spirit guide our mouths, our hearts, our decrees, everything we talk about tonight. Some of you all are going to be sharing some of your personal testimonies for the first time tonight. I come in agreement with you tonight that we are here with you as a family. We are not judging you, all right? We are ready to do this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I welcome you as always. You're always with me. As your prophet, as your woman of God, I pray that you use me mightily tonight for your people. Speak through me mightily for your people, Father God. As you have given us a word, I ask that you layer your prophecies, your mysteries, everything that you have impregnated in your heart for us on tonight. Father God, I give you myself fully. I submit myself to you fully for our purpose, for your purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for all things that are going to be birthed from this night. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. We pull everything out of our womb that no longer belongs there. Grief, hate, good to see you, Art, pressure, a lack of focus, wrong relationships. We pull everything out of our womb right now that no longer needs to have a home there. We are going to name what we are destroying. We are going to name what we are nurturing in the name of Jesus. Some of you all, God is telling me right now, you're feeling lost. You feel abandoned, God is telling me right now. You feel like no one knows your story but you is what he's saying. He's telling me not even kids, your kids even connect with you in a way that you would hope them to. God is telling me you feel like you're breathing alone. And when he says breathing alone, that means he feels you feel like you are living alone right now. And he is wanting to come to you like because he showed me this. He's wanting to give you people to lock arms with, to come into agreement with. He wants you to have a family through Aaliyah Connect Ministries and through everything that we're doing here. And he's saying that you are not alone in your grief. He's saying that someone says, yes, glory to God. He's saying that the way you feel you're in your grief, you're not alone. There's someone on this broadcast, even your woman of God, that may have feelings currently that you have or have had feelings that you have. So God is wanting to say, as you lock arms with us on tonight and beyond, that you are not alone. You are not alone, okay? So let me push this back just a little bit so we can get into this word. Glory to God. Okay. All right. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right. Thank you for that warm up, Father. All right. So here we go. We are going to open up the prophetic impartation after the word. We're going to do it openly. So we're going to see what prophecies God has for anyone on the line without directly talking to an individual, and then we'll go into the individual prophecies right after, okay? Jesus, thank you. So the question tonight is this. What are you willing to destroy, and what are you willing to nurture? God pointed us to leaven. You know what leaven means in the Bible? Leaven is yeast. Okay, and when we think about yeast, it's something very microscopic, but it's very powerful. 
Yeast in the Bible has a twofold nature. It's oftentimes related to sin. That's why with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Jews were told to not have any yeast in their bread, and it symbolized sin related to the Passover. When we look at the word leaven, it's mentioned in the Bible 39 times, and unleavened is mentioned in the Bible about 60 times. So this concept, this mystery is very unique to the purpose of God and to the message of God. And when you look at the parable, one of the seven parables that Jesus left us in the book of Matthew, it talks about the parable of leaven. And he uses it not in a, not in a sense of sin. He's using it in three ways. He's asking you, what small start are you willing to make? Just like the gospel of God, it's every small detail concerning the spirit and the gospel of God has the capacity to grow. And we've seen it grow all over the world. So in your personal life, what tiny detail are you willing to initiate in order to cause a hundredfold blessing to happen in your life? Are you willing to have that conversation, that tough, crucial conversation? Are you willing to forgive that person? Are you willing to start over in your mind? Are you willing to let go of patterns that have been in your mind that are, that are holding you back from promotion, that are holding you back from right relationships? What microscopic detail are you willing to not only eradicate, but what microscopic detail about you do you need to nurture? Are you skilled at communication? Are you skilled at asking questions? Are you skilled at leading? What are you willing to do to get yourself to the next level? Because if you have the kingdom of God on the inside of you, which when you think about yeast, it lives on the inside of the bread and it does its work from the inside out. So everything that God is calling you to do, whether, whether it be what you need to destroy, if the leaven in your life is sin, or if you're looking at leaven from the peaceful growth perspective, like the kingdom of God, what are you willing to do from the inside of yourself, your heart? Because the kingdom of God in these days, the kingdom is in our hearts. And we are told that in the Bible. What are you willing to start on the inside of yourself and manifest on the outside of yourself, woman of God, man of God? What has God called you to do? Let's name it. Let's name it. Let's name it. And here's the thing. The enemy also is a part of this as well. And the enemy can take a microscopic detail just like yeast. And this is why it's called sin in the Bible too. Because just like good has the ability to manifest and start from very small and manifest into something very large, evil does too. And so are you gonna destroy the deception in your life? Are you deceiving yourself in your life? Let me tell y'all something. Let me just tell you something real quick. God gave me the revelation that we are easily, we can be easily deceived by people you wouldn't even think would deceive you. And this might sound real simple, but I'm just going to tell you because God mentioned it to me twice. I had a situation with my nails and I was wondering, why the heck do my nails chip? It's, it's, going, it's, it's going somewhere. Stick, stick with this. I'm like, I've been, I've been investing in these particular types of nails for like $50 every two weeks or so, pretty expensive. But I'm like, why do they keep chipping? So after I get very upset and I go in, I'm like, hey, I got a problem. I've been investing in this. I'm not seeing other people go through this. What is it about what you've done, what you're doing with my nails that's calling mine to chip? I, I faced it. What I found out was they were putting a feel, in, intentionally putting a feel inside of my nails that caused it to have an additional layer and chip. Y'all, I've had these on for nearly three weeks now and they haven't chipped. The point is, deception is everywhere. These are people I have built a relationship with. Even where you invest your money, you could be deceived. So are you willing to kill the deception and confront it? Ask the question, think about where you're being deceived. Be willing to do that even on small scale things. Because the enemy is very tricky. You could have been sowing that seed. All the money that's been going into 
shoes, clothes, nails, things of that nature. That could be seed fighting you, fighting for you in the spirit. The enemy loves to take your money. Now, here's another thing that happened, and God let me see this. It has something to do with my website. Today, I had a salesman trying to sell me on some type of website security or something like that, which my site is already secure. I had it all basic. I've been paying this thing like crazy. And he was trying to sell me an upgrade, but he was deceiving me by making me think that I could not do it on like a monthly basis. He was like, oh yeah, you're going to save 61%. No, you, you can't do it this way. But I'm like, no, I've been doing it this way. I, I'm going to do it by month just in case I change my mind. And then what I did not let go when I was willing to be strong and face the deception, like you're deceiving me. He was like, you know what we can do? Let's go ahead and take care of this. And so it's just like, at the end of the day, evil is always playing out even when it doesn't look like evil. But are you willing to name it? Are you willing to face it in the name of Jesus? Are you willing to face it? Are you willing to counteract it? Or do you just go with the flow? Do you just go with the flow? Now, I told y'all about my uncle who was sick. And I told y'all that he had this, uh, this doctor coming into his room telling him that he was not going to make it. He might as well, you know, call his family, all these other things. And I told you, I had, my grandmother called me crying. I was in the middle of class. I drove to Milwaukee to see my family on that same day. I started speaking and decreeing over his life. And I spoke over the enemy in his life. I was not willing to let that little microscopic word, that yeast, that leaven come into his life and cause destruction. And guess what? There was another doctor that came right after and he started telling him he was going to make it. They were going to look at it. And I told my grandma that night, I said, those tumors are going to be removed. Lo and behold, a few days later, it was Tuesday. I went on a Saturday, Tuesday, five tumors were removed from his body. What are you willing to destroy, man of God? What are you willing to destroy, woman of God? Somebody is speaking witchcraft over your life that you don't even know about. Are you decreeing every night before you go to sleep that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Are you destroying decrees over your life in the spirit? God is telling me someone on this line potentially has someone that is obsessed with them in their life. Even the people that you're sleeping with could develop an obsession around you and for you and may not desire you to leave the relationship. And they may be speaking, this could go for men or women. They could be speaking over your life and trying to stagnate you so that you won't grow and potentially leave them. This is why Apostle Paul says it's better for you to be alone. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying everybody needs to be alone, but if God has not called you to the right person, it is better for you to be alone. God is just mentioning that spontaneously. There are decrees happening over your life behind closed doors that you don't even know about. You got to get into agreement with God and your woman of God and your church and start decreeing on top of those things in the name of Jesus. What are you willing to nurture? What are you willing to destroy? I destroy every verbal curse upon your life. I decree every word that has, have, that has been spoken over your future to stagnate you and to cause you to lose hope, to lose inspiration, to lose your desire to live a sinless life is what the Holy Spirit just wants me to say right now. Your desire to sacrifice yourself unto God. I decree and I declare whatever is causing you to have a greater desire for it over God, I rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Look at this. Jesus guarded himself from deceivers, from deceivers. He was willing to destroy evil works upon his life. When he was doing miracles openly, he ended up being confronted by people who accused him of using the powers of Satan to heal. So what he did was he started speaking in parables. So he was guarding himself from evil words from people who didn't believe in him anyway. 
Because if, if you are a person of faith, you won't need an explanation. You will believe Jesus. You will believe his word. But if you are a person that lacks faith, you won't heed any explanation as to why the word of God is true. And even a prophetic word is true for your life. You won't heed an explanation. So you want to be the type of person that doesn't come against God and deny him and accuse him and distance yourself from him. So what happened was, and God just wanted me to pause on that. Are you accusing God? Are you in disbelief concerning God about your life and what he can do for you is what he's saying right now? Are you causing spiritual warfare as a result of your unbelief? Are you putting yourself in agreement with Satan as a result of your chastisement of the word that has been spoken over your life? Are you? Think about that. So when God decided, he made the decision to speak in parables moving forward. What happened was he was able to teach the masses, but his deeper truths were only accessible to his disciples. Are you a person that only gets the, the surface truth of what God has for you? Or are you setting yourself up as someone who gets the deeper truth of God as a result of your faith, as a result of you nurturing your belief in God? Again, what are you willing to nurture? What are you willing to destroy? Let's name it. Let's name it. I decree and I declare you are going to be nurturing your system of belief in Jesus and Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You will be destroying all disbelief concerning the word of God for you, for the kingdom, for the future. You will have a straight and narrow path from this point forward. You will find inspiration in the text. I'm birthing life in your spirit right now, woman of God, man of God. Where you have lost your path, where you have lost your focus, I see that you saying hallelujah. Where you have lost your focus, where you have been deceived, even from the tiniest things. Y'all know I'm sitting here talking about tiny things and big things, but it's all deception. We need to name it. Because if God puts it on our heart to talk about, then it matters. Because a little bit of deception and your unwillingness to destroy a little bit of deception opens the floodgates for a whole lot of deception. And then you'll find yourself so deep in satanic warfare that you'll be really in a deep bondage. I'm talking third level satanic oppression and we don't want that. We're destroying that thing in the name of Jesus. No deception, small or large, none, none, none. We face that thing. We face that thing in the name of Jesus. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. We are nurturing our belief in you. Jesus. Jesus. Now, if you're wondering, where am I getting this parable of the leaven from? This whole talk about the leaven. I'm in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Okay? If you want to go and see that. Listen to this. God is reminding me that he will change your heart before he changes your manifestations. And I believe that's the reason why he put this on our heart today. There is something in your heart that is stagnating your manifestation. There is something in your heart that is causing your manifestation. But if you don't have a strong belief in the word of God and a strong system of prayers, a strong system of decrees, a strong system of boldness, a strong sense of destroying evil powers on a moment to moment basis, the manifestation power in your life will not be the strongest that it can be. And we want the manifestation power to be strong, strong in the name of Jesus, strong manifestation power. 
Some of you all, there's just a tiny fix. You say yes. Hey, CW Nixon 17. There is a tiny fix that God is calling you to make that would make all the difference. All the difference. Hey, Bobby, all the difference. But you must uproot whatever it is blocking in your heart. What it, that, that leaven, whatever is taking manifest inside of your heart to prevent you from missing a manifestation, a manifestation. Here's another thing. God is calling you to do big things, complete things, whole things. God is calling you to finish your assignment, to finish it, to finish it. God pointed me to the fact that when you have leaven and bread or yeast and bread, and we're talking about the, the good nature of the leaven, when you have it in the bread, it's completely lifted. The bread is completely lifted. God is calling you to completely lift your atmosphere, completely lift your spirit on a daily basis, completely lift your lifestyle, completely lift your finances, completely lift your look, completely lift your beliefs, completely lift your relationships. God, you never see when, when, when there is leaven and bread, you don't see it partially lifted or partially developed. That whole thing has been infiltrated and developed. Okay? So as you are thinking about how your life is going to end up, how your relationships are going to end up, God is wanting to call you to this. It's going to be full. It's going to be full of the life and the spirit of God. And you will not miss an opportunity to have a complete manifestation of everything God is calling you to have. Complete, 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 complete. We need to root the word complete deep down in our spirit because ain't no half, you know the word, half the word that I'm not going to say because I'm a little too holy to say that. <laughs> Have blank manifestations happen in our life. No, no, complete, complete. I'm a complete. So you want to be saying this. I'm going to complete my assignment. I'm going to complete my marriage to death do us part. I'm not going to cheat this thing. I'm going to choose this thing. I'm going to complete every single objective on my agenda every single day. You said I've been hearing, you said I've been hearing the word completion. Wow, yes, probably you came at the right time. God is calling us to complete because leaven completes. When the spirit of God sinks in your soul and gets rooted in your soul, it completes you. It completes a man. The Bible is complete. When you look at how things balance, I mean, goodness gracious, how in the book of Daniel. You see prophecies, and then 800 years later, they come into manifestation. Like literally, the angel Gabriel came to Daniel and told him about exactly how many days, 173,000 and some days, Jesus would establish himself as the Messiah on earth. An angel, an angel, hey, Gita, good to see you, Gita. An angel came to him and said, hey, this is what's going to happen. And guess what? 173,000 days later, Jesus had come and established himself as king over the Jews. Now, of course, they didn't uh, accept him at that time. And that's unfortunate. They didn't have a complete belief. Some of them did. Some of them didn't. Where are you not complete? That's what's holding you up. Do you understand? That if the Jews had had a complete submission to God, he would have established his kingdom. We even see that in the Bible. Where he stands, and some theologians predict that Jesus stood because he was looking to see if he would be completely accepted, completely believed by his people. So that he can come and establish himself. What is trying to establish itself in your life, but you are unwilling to complete something, man of God, woman of God? Let's name that thing. Name it. Are you willing to complete the divorce? 
Some of you are, hey, Latricia, glory to God. Your manifestation was so amazing. Your testimony, I will share it. What are you needing to complete? Jesus. Here are some questions that will inspire some change in your heart that God left for us. As you are looking into what you are willing to destroy, the, the evil part of the leaven, the evil reference of leaven, and then what are you willing to nurture? The good part of the leaven. The leaven that has the nature to manifest and transform your life and complete your life and to make it whole and mature. Here we go. What are you doing to save yourself from pain? This is what God mentioned tonight. Think about that. Are you doing something in your life to save yourself from pain? Jesus, that's a deep question. Do you know you need to move to a new location? God, God tells me this sometimes. For some people, it's always somebody he's telling to move. Because we even see that with his prophets in the Bible. He'll say, Elijah, go here. Then I'll tell you what to do. Some of y'all, God is telling you to move to another location. I feel that. And it's real. Yes. Yes. God is saying that. God is saying keeping yourself from wrong, wrong company. So moving away from wrong company is another thing. Because that's the wrong, the evil leaven. People in our atmosphere, they have a sin nature. Because it could start as a microscopic influence, but then all of a sudden you have demons flowing through your house because you let someone in that had demons on them. You, have, you, you, you may have had a casual encounter with someone not realizing that you were exchanging souls with the devil himself in that person. The evil leaven. Yes, sinful nature. That's right. That's right. Eternal victory 777. God is asking you, are you painting an illusion? Are you painting an illusion as to what the truth is in your life? Your productivity? Are you procrastinating? What are you not willing to see clearly? A person? I strongly believe that you don't get to know, you don't really know a person until like two years, two years, two years. Avoid attaching yourself too heavily to anyone you haven't spent enough time observing for two years. That's just my, that's just my standpoint. Now I know we get those stories of people that have known each other for like three months and all of a sudden they were married or something like that. No. I believe that some people are very good at disguising who they are. And I'm, and I'm saying I think many people are very good. I actually think most people are good. <laughs> but many people are not. Many people are not. Business, personal. I told y'all my little instances. I'm like, hold oh, on. God is mentioning this for a reason. We're going to talk about this. No deception. You said, you said my parents got married after three months. <laughs> you just said that. That's an episode of the eyes of the skies. Wow. Yes, I'm telling y'all. Jesus. Here's another thing God is asking us. I love questions. Questions. Jesus. Questions cause us to self-analyze in a way that's non-threatening. Okay, so here's another one. Are you governing your own actions? Are you? Or are you just responding? based on how you used to respond? Are you dominating conversations? You know the people that are asking you questions when you're having a conversation and they're the ones asking you questions? They're dominating the conversation. And if you're not careful, if you don't recognize what's happening, you'll end up just responding to their question just because you feel that that's natural, just because that's what you're used to doing, just because that's what they expect you to do. You want to always be in a position of dominance, even if it's at least in your mind. Even if 
You appear to be in submission. You appear to be receiving because we need to be receivers. But you always want to be thinking, how am I dominating myself in this situation? I have gotten far better at this because I, I'm i saying like not even that long ago. I would say probably just up until like maybe a few years ago. Even though I had lots of self-control, if I felt something was unfair or if I felt that I was being misunderstood, I would like want to fix it. I would want to correct a person's thinking. I would want to correct an atmosphere. I, 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 I had just been very much into correction. But then when I got closer and closer to God and God started calling me to be his prophet, his woman of God, and he started teaching me his wisdom and how he sends angels to oversee me, like there was something going on in my life that was highly uncomfortable. And I don't think people knew that I knew what was happening, but I did for a very long time. But it's like God just puts you in a state of submission because he's giving you access to higher wisdom and he'll tell you when to speak, what to do, when, but if he doesn't, then you need to just stay quiet and continue dominating in your silence. It's an amazing process and it takes so much pressure off of you, woman of God, man of God. And I'm kind of speaking in parables for a particular reason. Hey guys, hey Roselle. But at the end of the day, God is wanting to teach you because God is teaching me how to even speak in parables more. I love that. Those of you who are supposed to get the whole thing will get the whole thing for your life specifically. And as I'm speaking in parables, it has the ability as the Holy Spirit overtakes my mouth to make sense to you in various levels of your life. Higher order vocabulary. Higher order vocabulary. Jesus dominating in silence is correct that is so wonderful thank you so much for putting that up there eternal victory 777 you say you're so right yes latricia as the holy spirit has been teaching me and jesus has been overtaking me more and more the more silent i am the more i submit to god when it's time for me to submit my mouth to god and the more i speak in parables because truly, you don't have to say much to say everything that needs to be said. You don't. You don't. As I've been prophesying onto you all, I've noticed that the Holy Spirit is, uses economy of language. Very few words come across, but they all have very deep meaning. God is calling you to do the same thing. Cut your words short. Say only what's necessary. Because in the courts of heaven, just as in the earth, what you say can and will be used against you. God has just wanted to name that right now. And I'm feeling the presence of God really strong right now. Really strong. Some of you all are about to go into a conversation. And God is saying to tell you to ask you excuse me to ask him to take over your mouth so say that holy spirit take over my mouth right now and always just take it over tell him i don't trust myself with my own mouth i'm gonna need your wisdom to overtake my decision making concerning what i say concerning what i think concerning what i nurture Concerning what I destroy, bringing it back home. Ask them. That's one of the wisest thing you can do. Things you can do, woman of God. God is flowing me to Latricia right now. Latricia is on a Facebook line currently, and this is what happened. I woke up and I saw a fifty-two dollar seed. Yes, yeah, Charlene says, "Take over my mouth." Oh, good goodness gracious, Charlene. Thank you so much for sharing the word with one of your closest friends. I saw you connected us on Facebook. I invite you to share this broadcast with someone. Your, start with your closest friend. Invite your followers. Bring them into this atmosphere. But here's what the Holy Spirit wants me to mention right now as we're all joining together in our atmosphere of the Lord. I woke up to a 
$52 seat. And I said, okay. And it was, if Latricia, Latricia's already shared her testimony, okay? So I'm just going to say this. <laughs> you said, Holy Spirit, as an act of my will, I ask you to take over my mouth. Glory. That's so wise. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us. But anyway, Latricia sold that seed and was asking for uncommon favor. Yes, Poppy, say that. And here's her testimony. Let me find it on Facebook. Glory to God. Listen to listen to Latricia. What happened to Latricia after she sold a $52 seed into Aaliyah Connect Ministries, guys, and to our church? I'm about to find her testimony. I cannot wait to share with you. Essentially, she ended up getting. Oh, goodness. Yes, yes. The wisdom of rare lips being a rare jewel in the reigning splendor, miraculous thing tonight. Glory, glory, glory. Isn't that a miraculous thing tonight? You guys, I don't get on until the Holy Spirit says, let's go. Jesus, he's always teaching us and preparing something glorious for us. And now he's wanting us to pay attention to Latricia's testimony. So I'm going to my Facebook page, guys. And I'm getting it for us, and I'll pull it up so you can see it. Okay? All right. Thank you for your uh, for your patience here. Let's look at this thing. And then I can't wait to prophesy tonight. Glory to God. Prophesy more, because the Holy Spirit is on you already prophesying. He's speaking. He's decreeing life into you right now. Jesus. Latricia, post, if you still have your picture, post your picture of your, uh, of your testimony. Hold on, y'all. Jesus. I, I'm going I'm to let the Holy Spirit take his time with this. Hold on. I'm coming. All oh, my little pictures. Where is Latricia's testimony? Okay, anyway, I guess God wants me to uh, just say this straight up. So Latricia sold a $52 C, and I'll still be looking for it. She got half off of her flight there. I believe half off of her flight back. She got a hotel package worth like $397 or something like that. And I, if it wasn't, I think it was fully taken care of. She got a brand new Samsung watch on her on her uh, during her visit. I mean, she sold a fifty-two dollar, and I'm saying fee because God fed her. She yes, God is saying that because God even fed her. She got free meals, if not, I believe like a hundred percent of the time or ninety percent of the time. She got access to this amazing space twenty-four-seven. It was like this a uh, luxurious type of uh, uh, back set, and it was called the Millions, something about the Millions event. But anyway, God had told her to sow a seed. He said, double it, and he said, sow it into Aaliyah Connect Ministries. He told her what to sow and where to sow it. She was obedient, y'all, and she got a harvest. And so I just want to name that. The Holy Spirit wanted to name that right now for her. And for us all, that when God asks you to sow, sow, nurture sowing, nurture sowing, nurture sowing. It amazes me how much people hold on to what's in their hand and then they wonder why God is not imparting them more. And finally, it, it pops up. God does everything for a reason because there was a way that he wanted me to present that. Here's her testimony right here. <laughs> You said, thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord. So here's her testimony. Go online, aliaconnect.com or on Facebook. You can see some images of her at her event there. Okay? Glory to God. And we just want to thank God for everything that he's done. You can probably only see the pictures. You probably can't see the text. For Latricia this week, for my uncle, I sold a seed on his behalf and I went and I decreed and he got five tumors removed from his body. Five tumors. Yo, when I went to go talk to him before I started praying, I could hear his life leaving him. 
Like if you've ever spoken to someone, you said God showed up so powerfully from my obedience. Yes, Latricia. You said it was powerful. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Glory. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The power of your seed, the power of the words of your woman of God. I spoke over my uncle. I sold that seed. I said, uncle, before, because I went to go get him, I got him some like supplements. And I went to my grandmother's house and I picked them up. But I said, uncle, before I leave this hospital, I'm going to get these supplements for you. Come back. I'm going to sow the seed. I named that seed for him. And while one doctor was saying he was going to die, I said he was going to live. Another doctor was saying he was going to live. I was sitting next to my grandma and the Holy Spirit spoke to me because I believe she was waiting on the word. I give my grandmother lots of comfort because she knows I'm a prophet. She knows we have a long line of, of, of prophetic anointing, but she's been watching me so closely. I said, Grandma, he's not going to die. She was just crying earlier that morning. I said, Grandma, he's not going to die because Jesus told me as I was getting off the elevator that he wasn't. So I asked. I said, God, is he going to die? Because before I go in prophesying to anybody, I'm going to ask Jesus what's really going on because I'm going to tell you the truth. And he said he wasn't, so I kept speaking that. And I was sitting on the couch. You said, wow, yes. Oh, hey, DJ. I was, my grandma was sitting here. I was sitting here. And the Holy Spirit overtook my mouth. Because I didn't know she had wanted a word right there. And just out of nowhere, God said, the tumors are going to be removed. And I was just like, I, I, I wasn't even in like a deep like thought about it. I was in a deep thought about it. But I hadn't planned on saying that. Like I had just literally been taken over. And I saw her literally sit back like this and cross her leg like, well, well, it, it, it will be done then. If that's what she said, that's what's going to happen. They hadn't even told my uncle that they were going to remove tumors when I said that. All they said they were going to do was put something down his throat and see what was going on in there. They didn't say they were about to do that. I spoke that thing. I spoke that thing. The Holy Spirit spoke that thing. So when we talk about what we're nurturing, we have to be using our words to nurture what God is calling in our life. I spoke a harvest in his life. I spoke a harvest on behalf, on behalf of God. Okay? I, I decree that thing. As a result, he's living right now. He's living. He's living. He is living. And I, I really believe that he was on the brink of going somewhere else had God not interceded. Jesus, Jesus, just seeing that, y'all, if you only knew, God wants me to tell you right now, not everyone is a prophet, but everyone is prophetic. Claim that. I'm prophetic. I'm prophetic. Say that. What I mean is, you said, my, 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 yes, yes. You're prophetic, man of God, woman of God. You are. You are. Every day. Decree that. If nobody's ever told you that, your woman of God told you tonight, you are prophetic. You are prophetic, meaning your life, your words are life. Your words create life over your life, over your family's life, over the life of your finances, over the life of your career, over the life of your friends, over the life of the things that aren't even living in your life, but you're giving everything in your atmosphere life. You're prophetic. Everyone doesn't need to have the hand of God as a prophet to be prophetic. I got to name that thing. Start speaking that thing right now, right now, right now. Don't lose this anointing is what God is saying. Don't lose this anointing. What are you going to speak tonight? What are you going to speak? Yes, declare, declare, declare. Yes, Latricia says, I'm prophetic. I'm prophetic. I'm prophetic. Yes. You got to be willing to be uncomfortable. You got to be willing to be awkward. You got to be willing to be strange. God did not give me his hand and his prophetic anointing. I remember until one day, like I had a prophetic anointing, but he didn't come upon me strong until he knew that I was willing to be strange. Strange unusual, uncommon, do things out of the norm, be seen doing things out of the norm. It was a simple little seed. I let God know I was ready. I was standing on Michigan Avenue and I just stopped. I've shared the story in my like very initial broadcast. 
I just stopped in the middle of the street. I wanted some sun. I had been working and working, and, and where I work, I work downtown. All the buildings are very high. You rarely get access to the sun. So I just stopped. And sh in a big city, you don't just stop. People think you from somewhere else if you just stop. You want to get robbed if you just stop. But I just stopped and I stood there and God told me in my spirit how proud he was and how happy he was. I didn't know exactly why at the time, but I knew afterwards how much he had me prophesying, how strange I was sounding. But when people be like, wait, that's my wife. Wait, that's me. Wait, wait, what? And it didn't happen right away on these broadcasts. Like it would happen like one by one. And then it, then it would be like a night where we'd get like 10 and then it'd be one because because like God moves in different ways. It has different messages. God doesn't want to prophesy 15 times every every night. Every night. He might want to just talk to one person and tell, tell everybody a parable, a story. Okay? Glory to God. Jesus. Lift it higher. Lift it higher. Lift it higher. Share this broadcast. Like this broadcast. Okay? And we're about to move into the prophetic. I'm about to check God's notes for us tonight and see if there's anything else that he has to say. Y'all, look at our new soul card. It's so cute and colorful. So, <laughs> I put this cute little thing together for you all, all right, so that you can distinguish the various ways to sew. Okay, you said nice. Hey, DJ. <laughs> Thank you, DJ. Yes, so get your seed in the ground. Now, I'm not just saying that just to get you to sew into a ministry. No, I'm getting you to say that because you got to stop blocking your harvest you got to get your seed in the ground god is trying to manifest something but he's not going to manifest it without you trusting him what he has already put in your hand don't be stingy with god i mean i'm just going to say it like that and, and i don't want to say it in a way that's harsh but god is just saying it like that god will not give you more if he cannot trust you to impart back to him what he has already blessed you with y'all if you have never sown the seed, I invite you to sow that first seed. Ask God to take over your mouth, take over your body, take over everything concerning your life. The takeover seed, the takeover seed, the takeover seed, the takeover seed. I feel a strong anointing on that seed. And Father God, I'm going to pray right now. As people sow into your ministry, as your saints sow, I pray over their seed, Father. I ask you to give them special instructions. You're telling me to say this right now, special instructions on what to do concerning their life this week. Any seed amount, any seed amount. I am asking you, Father, to touch their seed, to get into agreement with their seed. Just as you have, have touched me, Goodness, y'all, I just got to say this right now. Y'all remember last week this thing had broke? And I was like, what in the world? I know God is trying to tell me something. This represents the day that God confirmed that I was his prophet, that he had his hand upon my life. He like had me go in a strange direction. I came up on the store. He had been telling me, you know, you know, you have my glory, you have my hand all the, the whole day. And I was like chronicling this through the day. And then I finally come upon the store on my way to school in the evening. I had went to a different direction because I was going to the bank. I happened upon the store. And I said, do y'all have anything that looks like God's hand? God has been speaking that I have his hand all day. And they said, yes, we have this. So anyway, this thing had ended up breaking. I knew I still had God's hand. Like that God, God even told me today, like, you will never lose me. You will never lose your perspective on You will never lose my covenant. You will, like God speaks to me like that just and comforting me because I know that I serve you. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming up here, God. What are we doing today? <laughs> and so um, God just constantly comforts me like that. So this is what God had to show me. And I'm, and I'm saying this because I want God to touch you this week, like how he touches me perpetually. So I know God got something in here for me, but I was just like, okay, I'll figure it out. Firstly, I went back and I found out this, they had, this was the last one in the store. Uh, they, they had some other ones, but this was the last one. And most importantly, God showed me a chapel behind the store, like in the back of the store. Okay. And so God was saying, no, I got you. I'm going to even preserve the last. This was the display one. I'm going to preserve the last one, the one that you like. Because there was one with like light pink. I, you know, you couldn't really see it. 
I'm a preserve. The last one, you like, I got you covered. You ain't got to wait for nobody to shit nothing to you. None of that. I know you want this. You're coming in here. We got you. But here's the thing. These sisters are going to tell you to go to the back because they have a chapel back there. And I want you to start praying back there and just having a comfort place while you're downtown working. Like after work directly. So now after work, I get to go to the chapel. God interceded and let me know like, oh, I know I'm going to break this. I know she, where she's going to go. I'm trying to get her to this, to this location that she doesn't know exists. I want God to show you uncommon favor this week. I want God to show you new things, new places, new avenues where you shall prosper on this week. I am asking God to agree with your heart that everything that is troubling you in your heart will be healed this week. I'm just asking you as you sow, I'm asking not only for you to sow and do your business with God, submit to God. Come on, y'all. But I'm asking God to meet you at the area of your submission of what is in your hand of any amount and show you new avenues of healing, growth. God was wanting me to say something specific. I don't want to lose it. Hold on. Revelation, but there was something, there was something else. Even where there's trouble, he's still feeling me as I'm trying to pull what I missed. All things that you don't know are gems for you. Gems for you. That are just around the corner, but you don't have an avenue. You don't have a hint. You don't have a direction. You don't have an awareness. I pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to be upon you as you sow. Jesus. Jesus, do that. Because a lot of us are fighting in the, in the natural and working in the natural. But we don't have our spiritual forces on point. Woman of God, man of God, if you take care of yourself in the spirit, God will take care of you in the natural. I know it. Your woman of God has been through so much warfare. Shalina saying yes. So much warfare. To the point where people have probably wondered, how the heck did she get out of that? It was my seed. It was my seed, y'all. My health. How the heck did I get out of being ill? How did God break that off of me? It was my seed. I will share that for the rest of my life. It's my testimony. And when God, you say yes, amen, yes. And when God healed my uncle, I prayed with him. I held his hand. I said, when God brings you through this, you have to promise to God that you will be a testimony of his glory, of his grace, of his healing power. His life was gone, y'all. It was, like, it was like, like he was slipping away. The reason why I say that, and I'm not going to go because I know I was just talking about that, but I just have to say this. When a person is talking, but they're like vibrating, the spirit, the words can't even get out of their mouth. Like it's like, uh, like the, their, their vocal force ain't strong. You know they're slipping away when that starts to happen. They're like, they're, they're Life force is leaving. And my mom, I remember she said, he just sounds so bad. Everybody was just so scared. But I went in there with the power of God and I rebuked that thing. He was seeing things. And I knew it was from the demonic realm. And they, nah, they wasn't stopping it. Stop the demonic strongholds and impressions in your subconscious mind is what God is saying. Because in your conscious mind, you might think all is well, but you don't know why deep down you have a depression. It's demonic. It's a stronghold. Break that thing. In the natural, it's not enough. You need to work in the spirit. In the spirit through your seed. I gotta say that thing. All right. Woo! The Holy Ghost. Jesus. Let me just check these notes to make sure we didn't miss anything. And let's do this. I'm seeing, oh, I'm seeing rain. I'm seeing a, a long umbrella. I'm seeing a woman carrying a long umbrella in the rain with children. But, but God's saying these are not natural children. These are ideas that have been uh, covered by like tainting rain. Like what your ideas need is uh, your ideas need sunshine. 
it, God is telling me the climate for your ideas, like the literal, like the, like you have the manifestation of the ideas in your hand, but the climate to manifest the ideas is just not there. Isn't that interesting? And so God, feed us, feed us. What, what, is, and man of God, take this for yourself. This is just how God in, like made me picture it. And God mentioned stones, like stones. You said, Lord, speak. Wow. Yeah, I, and then God said something about stones, like, like you either have a hard head, because God is God is not saying the stones were thrown at you, but I I it's like a stuck place, like you're stuck under this uh atmosphere of wrong climate concerning these ideas you want to burn. It's like stagnating. And God is saying a breath of, of fresh life is coming upon you. As you sow your seed and grow, because I'm seeing a tall tree, a tall tree. It's on an angle. I don't know why I'm seeing it on, a, on an angle. Maybe, maybe what you're developing is a little unusual, man of God, woman of God. But I'm seeing a very small, uh, excuse me, a very tall tree. And I see its root and I see it sprouting. And God said that a breath of fresh life is coming over you. As you sow, but you got to get that seed for it to sprout. God has given me three, six, nine, three, six, nine. So potentially uh, some of you have had, or maybe God wants to manifest things. And I feel like this is it. I feel like God wants to manifest things in your life in a pattern like that, like a three month period, six month period, nine month period, three, six, nine. So what that means is that God has a plan for your manifestation. For some of you, it is going to involve jewelry. For some of you, it may involve, it's, you're saying yes. C.W. Nixon is saying yes. Wow. For some of you, it's going to involve some type of uh, site, like pictures, taking pictures. Because I saw, I saw it's like site. For some of you all, it's going to be developing ideas for other people. Because I keep seeing like lots of kids, but God is telling me that these are not children. These are, un these are like ideas that are birthed inside of you that have not manifested. But I'm seeing a whole lot. So some of you are visionaries. Lots of ideas coming across for, for you all on the line, whoever God is speaking to through this prophecy. But I'm seeing you in like a studio atmosphere now. Where it's like, if you get in the right door, some of you all are going to need to sow a seed for right doors. Right doors. Because now I'm seeing you in like a, a like a studio type atmosphere and you're managing these children. But remember, these are ideas. You're managing ideas. So some of you may be in like a, a I get the word authorship. Handling wealth. Some of you all will be handling wealth, God is saying. So some of you all may be working in the area of finance, accounts, that type of thing. I'm seeing you all overseeing lots of little children. But again, these children are representing ideas, fruit, manifestations that need to, to grow or, or uh, seeds that need to manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God says, speak up. Speak up. So some of you all this week, and even as you're sowing your seed for uncommon favor this week, some of you all need to be uh, asking God 
what to say as you speak up. And I, I feel like God, I had missed something that God wanted to say because he's giving me that feeling. I missed it. So hold on. <laughs> I got to make sure I catch that in the spirit. Okay. God is saying favor when you speak. Favor when you speak. So saying the right things to the right people, being well received when you speak. As you're sowing your seed, you want to name that. Favor when you speak. Because God is giving me the sense that you don't necessarily need to know what to say. I saw those hearts. You don't necessarily need to know what to say. You just need favor when you do the talking, when you speak. A favorable ear. Someone that wants to bless you. Someone that identifies something about you and something about what you've said that matches a problem that they need solved and they want you to be the one to solve. They want you. I decree and I declare over your seed that it will get you favor to the point where people will want your hands to create the solution because they know that there is something about you that has been proven. You've got a proven track record you you're going to say, even if you don't have a proven track record you're going to say something that clicks with the mind of the right person but you should say yes amen god is using the word trigger god is going to the holy spirit is going to overtake your mouth so much that you will Trigger the right things in the minds and the hearts of man. Right man. Trigger. Trigger. Yes. Yes. Trigger. C.W. Nixon. Yes. The Holy Spirit is saying trigger. 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 You're going to trigger something. You're going to trigger something. You're going to ignite something. And the thing is, remember when we were talking about the leaven, the yeast? And how it causes the whole bread to manifest and, and rise. When we're thinking about our impact as we are speaking and we are receiving favor, we want everybody around us to be prospering. We want everyone around us to be prospering. Welcome, Benny. Glory to God. Everyone prospering. And maybe that's what you want to name. Glory to God. Welcome, Benny. That's what you want to name. When you're talking, and, and I'm not just saying that to just say it. I'm saying that because we're going to decree that thing. If you hire me for this, I'm anointed for this. That's what you want to be believing. That's what you want to be nurturing on the inside of you. We're killing this belief in yourself. We're killing it. We're nurturing. You want to be saying things and you want to be believing things. I'm anointed for this. Why? Because God has his hand on me for this. I have my mind in the word of God to provide solutions for you. And guess what? We're all going to prosper. Because when, when I prosper, as a vessel of God, we all prosper. We all prosper. We all prosper. We all going to prosper. Because we have the hand of God. You said, thank you, prophetess. Yes, yes. Nurture that. Nurture your anointing. Destroy anything inhibiting you from speaking on your anointing at the right time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. God is pointing me to this right now. Look out for your own interest, man of God, woman of God. It's in your best interest to speak highly of yourself. If you want, who will? If you want, who will? People, think about it like this. People are waiting to hear you boast in your abilities to serve them. Your character. They want you to boast. Because before, before they believe in you, they got to know that you believe in you. Do you? Do you? Yes, God takes pleasure in your prosperity and the prosperity of your tongue concerning yourself. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of your tongue concerning yourself. Say that. Say that. 
When have you spoken highly of yourself publicly? How long has it been? Who was it to? God is calling you to push beyond that. We are raising that bread. We are raising that bread. That means we are raising the volume of our voices concerning who we are and what we are capable of doing at this next level of our anointing. With a humble heart. With a humble heart. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. God is wanting to ask you this right now. Can you identify when your potential is being tested? Being tested. Because as God is having us pray on favor, we want to name this right now. There are people watching you to see if you are ready for the next level of your blessing. If you are ready for what's on the if you are ready to be at the table, your potential is being tested every day. God just wants to say it. Your potential is being tested every day by God, by Satan, by colleagues, by friends. Have you thought about that? Your potential being tested? Your potential for eloquent conversation. You say, my potential is being tested every day. You say, yup, yes, glory to God. Glory to God. Name that. Imagine if you knew that your potential was being tested. What would you do? You said, this is good, right? Glory to God. Glory to God. How would you behave? If you knew that every moment of the day, your potential was being tested. Jesus. Say this. My potential is being tested right now. Lord, prepare me. Prepare me. Prepare me. Prepare me to win. Prepare me to win my potential test. And not potential test. Test coming up. No, it's happening. This is your potential test. Woo, Jesus, thank you. Jesus. Woo. Here, here goes some scriptures for you to eat on as we continue to uh, prophesy, okay? God wants you to know that you are the temple of God. Yes, prepare me to win. Oh, yes, glory. Tisha, yay. You said I will win. Yes, glory to God. CW makes you will win. Here we go. Three quick uh, scriptures here. You are the temple, you are the temple of God. So that connects us. Your potential is God potential because you are the temple. You are the temple. You are the temple. So if you want a reason why, you want a reason why, you want a reason why your potential is supposed to rise, your potential is supposed to be complete, your potential is supposed to manifest. Glory to God. See, do you see how the Holy Spirit is bringing that all together for us in our church on tonight? Yes, Tisha, welcome home. Glory to God. So glad to see you back. Your potential is rising because you are the temple of God. Jesus. It says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, saints? Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Eat on that some more tonight. Open up your Bible. Let that be known, seen, felt, heard upon you. Know this too. Your whole duty is to keep the commandments of God. We see that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 through 14, it says, let us hear, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Here it is, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. So as your potential is being tested, you want to say test it out. Are you keeping the commandments, woman of God, man of God? 
Are you recognizing that your whole duty is to fear God and keep the keep the commandments? Your whole duty is to fear God and keep the commandments. Everything else will flow for you through that. And I'm going to name it. A person who doesn't sow seed does not fear God enough to do it. That is evidence of a lack of fear of God. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Sin nature is evidence of a lack of fear of God. Sin nature, sin behavior, an unrepentant heart, a, a heart that knows it has sinned but has not repented, Yes, glory to God. It's evidence to God that you don't fear. And that's your whole duty, according to the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 through 14. What's, what's our whole? What's our whole matter? What's the conclusion? And notice it says, here the conclusion. It's like after all things are said and done, the conclusion. For us all is this. Obey the commandments. Fear God. Obey the commandments. Fear God. Nothing on your agenda in a day is more important than that. Nothing. 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 And the more we heed that, the more God will heed us. Because I promise to God, if I was a sin nature and woman, I would not be a prophet of God. I would not hear from the Holy Spirit. I would not be pointed to words that would be seated in our soul for us every week. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. That doesn't mean God can't bless you as you're working through your process. But as you're working through your process, God is still testing your potential. So every time, like what Tricia says, she saw a move of God after sowing a specific seed in a specific soil, a rich soil, our soil, Aaliyah Connect Ministry soil, and she saw the work of God. When God continues to reveal himself to us, there's a certain level of respect that comes along with that in our hearts. You can't help but respect God when he shows himself off to you in a mighty way. That's And that's testing potential because he sees a potential in you. So he said, hey, I'm going to show you. Oh, you obey me? Now that, okay, we're doing this thing together. You obey me? All right, now I'm going to show you who, how I do this. All right, we do, you do this, I do this. It's, it's a flow. And the more we respect God, the more he reveals himself to us. Jesus. Order. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. So as we are organizing our thoughts, deciding what we're nurturing and what we're destroying, we need to do this all in order. God is not going to call you to run to on one side of the, the nation and then on the other side of the nation in the day. If God is calling you to nurture uh, your new move, God is going to give you ordered steps to do it. God is an ordered God. God is an ordered God that operates outside of the realm of time. So he can see what will happen based on every move you make. He can see the outcome. And woman of God, man of God, I want you, woman of God, woman of God, woman of God, God wants me to keep saying that, and man of God. But I believe that this word right here is for a woman of God on the line or who will be joining us on the line. Thank you for those hearts. They are beautiful. Don't skip steps is what he's saying. Don't skip steps. He will get you to where you're going in an orderly fashion. Because some of you may have been thinking, like, do I do this? Do I just go ham and just take care of this thing right now? <laughs> God is saying no. There are times where he will call you to be sacrificial. I know. I have had to leave a, a state not knowing that I was even going to leave the state of Illinois and I moved to, to New York but I did so even in a short period of time in ordered steps so yes do that thing yes 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 and know that in all things you're serving God in every step that you take through the power of the Holy Spirit you will not be making your moves alone glory to God Jesus, Jesus. Now I'm about to join you all on Periscope and put my notes away. Father, is there anything else that you'd like to impart before we talk to specific people? Jesus, thank you, Father. Glory to God. 
All right. Is anyone open for a prophecy? Anyone open for a prophecy? Jesus. You said, send me where to sow. Okay, Bobby. Here's everything you need to know. We've got a brand new card with all the information. Very colorful. Yep, Charlene, you said me. Yes. Here's all the information. Yep, get your seed in the ground. Don't let the enemy steal your seed. It's one of the being a prophet of God, and I'm sure other people who minister to people. Yes, yes, whatever God puts on your heart. Not a specific amount. I'm not saying so this amount, so that amount. No. Let God speak to you. Hey, Sandy, glory to God. Let God speak to you. Somebody is saying, put that back up. I felt it in my spirit. Um, let God speak to you about what to do. But I got to just tell y'all right now, one of the things that troubles ministers and prophets, I will say the most, is them knowing the power of the seed and knowing that someone they're ministering to is going through something, but seeing them struggle with departing from something that's in their hand. Like, even if it's like $20, like seeing them hold it and then seeing the enemy cause them to fear and cause them to not work with God and like employ God with what's in their hand. And like the deception that, oh, yeah, like, oh, this person just wants your money. No, no, I work. I'm very well taken care of. I'm not lacking a thing. It's not about me. It's about God giving me soil, anointed, rich, fertile soil. It's about you partaking in all of my holiness. And I'm not saying that in a way to uh, exalt myself, but I'm saying this in a sanctified manner. All the time I spend with God, you're sowing into that. All the worship that I do into God and into people's lives and, and speaking to them, you're sowing into that. There's a reason why you reap, you reap big. There's a reason why we're seeing health and miracles. There was a woman on here with multiple sclerosis that we prophesied to. When I say we, me and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ the Father. And I spoke over her and she said, I've been sleeping better. I haven't even been having to take my medicine. It's the power of God, y'all. And so I just wanted to get that off of my heart right now because it's, it's really troubling to see people not so, honestly. Like, just knowing the power of it, it really troubles our hearts. <sighs> Okay, don't grieve God, really. Just do what you can, whatever it is. Get that process going. Okay, okay, now I'm on. Anybody open to a prophecy? Come on, y'all, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk some more. This, we on, okay, over an hour, getting fed the word of the God? Yes, yes, you get your seat in the ground and you're making your promise, yes. You're making your faith seed. You speaking it now? I speak over your seed. Once it gets here, I speak and I agree with your seed that God will show you every route to take to get to favor, to get to the right doors. Jesus, to get the Holy Spirit speaking through your mouth, overtaking your tongue so that you may speak right words, so that you may birth yourself at your next level. Glory to God. There are so many decrees I want to do over your seeds. As you sow, guys, make sure you're naming your seed. Give it an assignment. Just like an apple seed produces an apple, you want your seed to produce what you say it's going to produce. It doesn't always need a scripture attached to it. It needs a word from a woman or a man of God or God himself in the Bible on it. And it needs your word on it, your prophetic word on it. Jesus. Jesus. God said, get very sick. God said this two weeks ago. I want you to get serious about the sowing. I want you to get serious about their seeds and so on. And actually, I said that on an audio broadcast that I did on a Friday a couple weeks back when God started telling me that. God's not playing around. Anybody open to a prophecy? Sandy says, sowing, yes. Yes, glory to God. All right, I'm going to keep prophesying, y'all. I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep just saying what's on the spirit and what's on the heart of God and let him speak to you openly if no one wants to come forth for one. Okay, if you happen to change your mind and we're still here, I'll go ahead and speak over you and I'll prophesy over you, okay?
Yes. Yes, the PayPal is on there. God showed me a microphone, kids in a, in a microphone. Some of you all may have children that are in like some type of performing arts. That keeps coming up. Because uh, children came up as ideas. And now children are coming up as like actual children in performing arts. You said thank you. Oh, glory to God. You're welcome. Arts, arts, music. Because I saw a live. And I just want to mention that really quick. So I don't know if there are some plays that maybe you all have gone to. You said speak, Lord. Sandy, do you want a prophecy? You said speak, Lord. What part? Oh, Poppy said I'm open. Oh, Charlene said I'm open. Oh, man, I missed all these. I'm open. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm willing. I'm willing to impart. Uh, Poppy, God said he... Wow, Latricia, yeah, because God showed me two kids. One definitely was a little boy and microphone. And God just wanted to mention that really quick. I don't, I don't know if you wanted to say anything more. <laughs> but, yeah, ain't that something? I said Poppy first, but Charlene and Sandy, I saw, and we're, I'm going to talk to you all, too. Let's do this. Let's see what the Lord is willing to impart. Glory to God. Jesus, we lift you on high. Jesus, you are the one and only God. You are the highest of the high. And when I say God, I mean the highest, the highest, the highest, the highest. You are the prince of all principalities. You are the king of all thrones. It is you that sends the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for giving us Jesus as our, as our salvation, as our foundation, as our blood, as our reconciliation unto you, Father. Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, Father, thank you for our relationship. You are a good, good Father indeed, indeed, indeed. Say that with me. Say that with me. Yes. Bobby, God, uh, God said your name. Prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing. Feed us, feed us, God. Father, so into me, so into me. For poverty, for poverty, for poverty. Bobby, God is mentioning. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing, Latricia. Yes, yeah, CW makes sense. Poppy, God is mentioning uh, like an evil aunt. An evil female presence upon you. That's what I heard in the spirit. It came across as aunt. It could be someone who is like a little is like older uh, than you. It could be an actual aunt, but God mentioned a, a negative female spirit. Negative female spirit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And God is saying, you see her as a friend. Like you, 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 but I, I think, I don't know if it's your husband, but your husband or some male close to you have warned you about this female presence. But I don't know if it's just like who you like, how you function, who you are, but you're just kind of like, oh no, she's fine. And like you really truly deep down do not believe that this woman is a problem. But God is wanting to confirm that if you have a female presence in your life, and like your husband or close male has told you to watch out for a particular woman, God is wanting to also say that. Like, watch out for a particular woman. Now I'm getting the sense that. This particular woman could not directly be like causing you a negative uh, vibe or like saying bad things to you uh, uh, about you, but like their practices, like something in their heart is not of God. Something, it's like an impression that they're making on you. Um, a belief system, an aura, an energy, a spirit about somebody like older than you, some, something in your family. 
But God is giving me the sense that it's there. And someone has spoken out loud against the individual. Just, just a, an ungodly spirit. And, and Gita is saying, like, witchcraft? I don't think the person is, is doing witchcraft necessarily, but, like, the sense that I'm getting is they are not making a, a good impression on your spirit, on your life direction. Because I think that you may still be, imp like, impressionable in a sense. Impressionable. And, and God is wanting to guard you because of how impressionable you are. In particular, for, God wants to guard you for many reasons, but like the impression of this individual is concerning God. And it should concern you because God has mentioned it onto you. And again, this would not, and, and God is saying, you don't have to keep saying it. So I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Poppy. And I'm getting the word, uh, the letter S. Like, is there, is there a woman in your life that, where this is making a little bit of sense or a lot of sense? And I know Facebook takes a little time, but this is what God is speaking over you, Poppy. There's a woman. And, and glory to God. Glory to God. There are... Yes, think about that. Think about that. And it, it could be somebody either on your side or a spouse's side, but God is concerned about one particular female influence. One particular female influence. And, and he said the words cut and dry. You said, yes, it's a new person. Yeah, is this person older? Because sometimes God will use the word auntie, and God will explicitly mean auntie, but like, I just get the sense that the person is older. You said, it's a friend. Okay. Yeah, because God said, cut and dry. Like, I didn't have to elaborate, keep saying nothing, but that's for you. She probably saying it's a friend. So has your husband spoken out against this in individual? Because God made it very clear to me that your husband spoke out against this female spirit, this female energy. I believe that he, ha well, she hasn't said anything yet. I believe that he has. If he has not, it's going to come. It's going to come. You said, I think it might be my play cousin. So that would connect the reason why God called it a relative name. Either way, you want to be heeding, and it's one person. You want to be heeding this person. You want to remove them from your atmosphere. God, God, tell us, tell us, tell us more, pull more. And I'm going to be pulling, and I don't, God doesn't like me to say that word. I am going to be discerning more for you all. And if you're waiting on your prophecy, go ahead and wait. I'm going to uh, be on still for some time. I just want to see if there's anything God is showing me you in a, uh, like in a, a circular type of chair, but you're being spun around, spun, spun, spun. It's like potentially if God is connecting these two stories, you are being confused. Uh, maybe turned around. Something about you is, is like shifting. But I get the sense that it's this person turning your wheels around in some way. Because you are the one inside of the, there, you know how some chairs that you like kind of, they can be pulled from like a, a pole and like it'll have the, 
chair and the person will sit down on the chair, but the way that the chair is designed, you can like spin around in it. And I've never seen a chair that looks exactly like this, but God is showing me in the spirit. But God is just literally showing me you sitting and someone is spinning. So I'm taking that as someone is, is spinning something about you, your belief system, something concerning you. And the, and I don't know if this matters, but the chair was metal. It was like a modern chair. So I don't know if this person is, uh, you said, I think I know who it is. I don't know if this, I don't know if this person is coming across as like a new age type of person or like a, like I, I know what's going on today or like a, like a person that uh, tries to give the impression that they are ahead of like the, the ancient wisdom or the wisdom of God. Because God showed me the structure of this chair and it's like very futuristic. Because remember I mentioned just spontaneously, like I've never seen a chair designed like this. But remember, like God will give us particular types of visions for particular reasons. And the more detailed we are about it, I see those hearts, the more detailed we are about the design, and like all the things that I see, the more interpretation we can get and the more we can discern from God. But they're spinning you. It's like turning you around, direction. You become, you're becoming directionless, potentially if under this influence. Jesus. Eyes wandering, eyes wandering, eyes wandering. So potentially this person could have you maybe, uh, I don't know, looking at other people, other, other, other interests, other something. But God did just say eyes wandering. Loopholes. Loopholes. So potentially this person is deceptive even. But yeah, let me just spend a few more minutes on this, see if there's anything holds here before I move on. And God is just saying it's dangerous for you to keep like seeing her, whatever this is. God is just mentioning danger. Okay. And God is wanting you to, because God showed me a garment. As I closed my mouth, he showed me uh, like a king, king-like garment. And he's saying that, all oh, of those hearts. He's saying that he wants you to like put on his garment. Like clothe yourself with the word of God to have an increase in your discernment. A layer of protection over you for people who are trying to come in and out of your life. Like, because I, I, I saw, and that's interesting, I saw the bottom of the garment too. Virtue. You know, the bottom of the garment in the Bible is related to virtue. That's why when the woman touched the bottom of Jesus' hem, or Jesus' hem, which was the bottom of his garment, she, he said, I feel virtue come out of me. And so God gave me the vision of the bottom of a garment because he's talking about virtue. He's saying clothe yourself essentially with virtue and don't allow anybody in your atmosphere who lacks the virtue that you know that's inside of you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Charlene and then Sandy. Charlene, are you still on there? Poppy, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for imparting to us for Poppy. Thank you. And anyone else who can take that for themselves, be careful of the infiltration. Because remember, what are you willing to nurture? What are you willing to destroy? It's interesting because God mentioned a relationship. C.W. Nixon says, yes, C.W. Nixon 17. Because remember, God talks in parables. And even though he's maybe prophesying to someone else, even as he was guarding his tongue and, and giving his messages and parables to the people and preaching to the people, still talking to the same people who were accusing him of using satanic powers to heal. That's why he started talking in code. He was still teaching them. 
but the deeper meaning was for his disciples. So as you are spending all of this time in the presence of God and in the presence of your woman of God, you are getting access to deeper revelation. Glory to God, deeper revelation. Deeper revelation. Charlene, are you still on there? Poppy says, amen. Such on my lipstick, y'all. <laughs> Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love coming together with you all every week. Jesus, our church. Charlene, C.W. Nixon and Charlene are the same. Oh, <laughs> Charlene, hey. Oh, I love Charlene is on Periscope and Facebook. Glory to God. Jesus. Charlene, when I look at your picture, You said when you sow a seed, what do you mean when you have to name it? Charlene, real quick, and I'm going to uh, answer this question in just a moment. Gita, that's a perfect question. Charlene, when I looked at your picture, God let me see angel wings. And God let me know that you have an angel. And I believe it's a newly. You lost something. You lost something, and God is has given you an angel to cover you. I don't know if you lost someone that was in your atmosphere, like you had you were like you were normally around someone, like they were in your day-to-day -day life, your daily life. But God said, God, let me see that you had literally had an angel upon you. It's a new one. It was like given to you by God. Glory to God. Sandy says, Amen. But then God followed it up saying that you have lost someone. And I'm still waiting for him to give me the connection. But he said, You lost someone, and I and I got the sense that potentially the angel was there. I don't want to say it's like a substitute, but Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I I really feel, Charlene, I want to get all these words because I'm, I'm getting a lot right now. Yina has a quick question. Stay right there. Jesus. When I say name my when I say name your seed, Yina, what I'm saying is give it an assignment. So if you are trying to uh Break off demonic strongholds off of your finances, you would name it. Breaking demonic strongholds off of my finances. That's what you would say. Okay, so you would give your seed a name. You can give it a scriptural name. You can literally give it a scripture. But give it something to do. Because your seed, God was telling me earlier, your seed is your friend. Some of you all, if you don't feel like you have friends, I was washing my dishes and God dropped it in my spirit. He said, when you get on them tonight, tell them your seed is your friend and, and and if you again if you don't feel like you have friends so your seed you have plenty of friends in the spirit your seeds are working for you and they are befriending you i've never heard anybody say that literally dropped by the power of the holy spirit you said so true i literally feel like i have no more friends you see how god tells me when to say certain things that was for you and that's for anybody who connects with that lord i love Y'all, I look forward to getting on these broadcasts with you all. I really do. It is a joy to me to see you all. And like how we're coming together, we're building our relationships. Uh, you all, the same lovely ladies and gentlemen, come on every week, y'all. Like this is real, like we are really a fabric. We are really connected. God knows when you're coming. God knows what to, what to say to you. DJ, right? Glory to God. I love this. And like I've been doing this is my like 40 second broadcast or something like that. But when I know that I'm going to see you all, like the same faces, and of course we welcome all new people. We 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 welcome them. But when I know who I'm coming to see, and when I know who I'm coming to feed, like it makes my role as a woman of God even better. I just want to name it. It makes it even better. Then it says, I love being here. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Glory to God. 
I want that comment. <laughs> anyway, I'll get it. Okay, I love that. Charlene, I'm curious. Have you lost someone close to you? Facebook takes a little while. I don't know if it was through divorce or death or if it wasn't like a divorce, some type of separation. But I really, God has really given me the sense that someone left your atmosphere, but God has imparted an angelic presence for you. But I feel like it's connected to losing a person. Losing a soul, losing something that was uh, precious to you. Uh, empty nester. It could be something, but something I feel like something, something left. And God imparted this new presence. We would really love to know, Charlene. I know, again, it takes a while on, uh, on Facebook to come up, but God let me see that angel, one in particular. You said, yes, I live alone. Oh, you said, yes, I live alone and I'm very lonely. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. But Charlene, she's on Periscope now. I'm looking at her on, I'm looking at her on Facebook here, but she's also on Periscope. God, let me feel that, Charlene. But Charlene, was there someone recently that, that had left or passed? Because it was like a sudden, and maybe it's a newfound. No, I, I really feel like God is telling me that someone recently parted. Now, this is newfound information and discernment in my soul because the Holy Spirit is just letting me sense this now. So I know it, it feels new to me, but I'm really interested. I know you're alone. Did you recently lose somebody? Because that's the impression that I got. You say yes, and yes, a lot of strange things were happening in the house. Wow. See, y'all, I would never know that. I would never know that. Charlene could have been like... And I knew she wasn't going to say this because God is always accurate. But I, I didn't know Charlene. Charlene could have been married for 32 years, you know, uh, with a house full of kids, uh, you know. But you see how God can give your woman of God, your prophet, words and senses and sensations. You said, I had to pray to my house. That's, that explains the angel that God sent. But I gotta just glorify God on that. God spoke that to me. I would never know that on my own. Never. Thank you, God, for revealing yourself unto us tonight. God showed me and said, Pickle. So, concerning what had been happening at your house, and I believe Sandy is Charlene's friend, because I remember when Charlene connected me to Sandy. Pickle, pickle, pickle. God, why did you show me that? Concerning Charlene's house. Something that was like fresh ended up becoming not so fresh. Like some, something became unclean. And I'm not saying pickles are unclean, but you know, pickles start off as cucumbers. And then through the pickling process through the extraction of the oxygen, adding of things like vinegar, it, they become pickles. And so God is just revealing through that that something was once alive and then it was just losing life and losing life. And God said there was, e there, there was an even better way to express that. God even corrects me as I'm prophesying. <laughs> I was like, there's a better way to say that. Something transformed from being alive to
to dead in a sense. God likes that better. Somebody might have even tried to kill somebody. In a sense of abuse, something became very sour. Because God showed a pickle for a reason. Bumpy, sour. Some people like pickles. But for you, I get the sense, because God gave me that and he gave me the, the 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 cucumber versus the pickle for you it wasn't fresh for you it didn't work for somebody else what was going on may have worked for for someone else that was their appetite that's what they preferred they liked the bitter they like they like that type of you know experience but for you you were looking for a fresher experience is what i'm getting the sense in my spirit God showed me, like, cake, birthday cake. Like, I don't know if something happened around your birthday or you were disappointed around your birthday, but God showed me a birthday cake. And he was saying, you like joy, you like celebrations, you like, like, that's, that's another thing. Like, birthday cake celebration, that, again, that's a lie. But maybe the force that was on the, on the outside of you that you lost you said, it's almost my birthday, September 22nd. Wow. God just wanted to say happy birthday. Happy birthday then. Because God showed me right here, right above here, a birthday cake. So I'm like, why am I seeing a birthday cake? Because your birthday is on September 22nd. That's in about 10 days or so. Glory to God. Jesus, thank you, Father. But I also want to connect that to what God was saying, like, You weren't getting the feeling that, that you want. Welcome to our new viewers. Glory to God. Welcome. God showed me a straight white line. And it looked like a white line upon a car. I first get the sense, and I know that God is saying that your way is straighter. It's a cleaner path. And then since God gave me the impression that this was upon a cart, God makes me feel like you are going places. Like you're like this is not your stop. Yes, you just say, welcome. This is not where you're stopping, woman of God. This ain't it. And God has given me the number four, five, six, four, five, six. And showing me the back of your car. I feel like you are going to end up taking a road trip. You're going to drive somewhere. You're, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you're packing everything up and you're, you're moving to another place inside of a car. But God showed me clear path upon a car, four, five, six, in the back of a car. So I get the sense that potentially you will be getting in the car with other people. Even though I know you said you're lonely, God said four, five, six for a reason. Like, there are the, and it could be spiritual. Because I didn't see people in, in the back of the car. I saw numbers. And, you know, there, there is a such thing as angel numbers. So if you are thinking about taking, like, a road trip or going somewhere, know that you won't be alone. Because I saw, again, four, five, six, a, a, a sequence of numbers in, in literally a back seat. And you were in the front, like, driver's seat. Have you thought about going somewhere in a, in a vehicle, like, taking a road trip, like, just getting away or, like, because God is mentioning car, trip, travel, clear, clear path, clean path for you for a reason. And if you have not, I will say consider it because I see the vision of you in the driver's seat, going new places, celebrating your clean, your cleansed path. Your this I saw a white path. 
You says, yes, I've been thinking about a road trip, but my car is not doing too good right now. Dang, y'all. Y'all see the power of God? Look at that. God knows what she's thinking. And God is letting our prophet know what she's thinking. Road trip, road trip, road trip. Yes, I've been thinking about a road trip. Yes. Jesus. I see you. And again, I don't see any actual people in the car. I just see numbers. You will be accompanied by angels in numbers. On this trip, I decree and I declare, because I see it. I see it in advance before you even take it. Wow. You actually have been thinking about a road trip. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for accurate prophecy. A clear, clean, prophetic anointing. Thank you for letting me see in the lives of your saints before they even take certain actions. Thank you for letting me see the manifestation of their thoughts to impart onto them. You're going to take the trip and you're probably going to take it. You won't be alone, but you probably will be the only natural person in the car. And I don't know why God is saying this. God, I don't know if you had thought about sleeping in, sleeping in the car for a little bit. Like, I don't know if it was an extended road trip and you had planned on, like, just kind of taking a couple days inside of the car. Because like, God says sleeping in the car. I don't know why God said that, though. You said, I feel like I need to go to West Palm Beach to minister to a friend. Jesus. Prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing. Does one of your friends have like a rare skin disease or like a rare, maybe not a disease, but like a pigmentation? For some reason, I know that's very specific. I'm just going to say it. It could represent light hitting the person's face from from a like light and then uh like casting of a shadow and then the shadow not hitting this part so this part was normal. But I saw an individual that wasn't you. As you were saying that, I saw an individual that wasn't you. And I saw, and this could be this could mean literal, like I interpreted that as literal, but it could also mean spiritual. This person, God let me see this person as a shorter being. I believe they will be short. I believe they are shorter than you. And God let me see the majority of their face dark. And then this part light, just this part. God, why did you show me that? I don't see any wounds on the person, but maybe they have been abused in a certain way. Maybe emotion, maybe this person is going through emotional abuse. Because if they don't have an actual skin disorder where they're like multiple tones of skin, they're being, maybe I'm trying to discern this, right? Prophetic anointing, prophetic anointing. They could either be self-abusing but there's something going on where they're not have they don't have like physical like afflictions but like there's something being cast upon them and i'm trying to discern whether the cast is coming from another person or from themselves potentially this person has gotten into like a deep depression like a real deep depression and i and i get the sense that they're highly academic But it's something about their atmosphere, something about what they're choosing to focus on. <sighs> Had to get that off. It's causing this kind of like this uh, dissonance. And God showed me that through the texture of the skin. But again, that could be very uh, spiritual. So I initially interpreted that potentially emotional wounds from casting from another person or like some type of self-inflicted harm. 
self-infliction. Uh, the self-inflicted harm could be something related to like an identity crisis. Because again, I've seen a two-tone on this person. And I didn't, it wasn't just them. Like there was a couple other people in their atmosphere. But God had me focus on this particular individual. So God wants me to pause and just ask you, is any of that making any sense to you about this person? Jesus. Jesus, prophetic anointing. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Jesus, thank you, Father. You say, yes, the guy has another girlfriend and she still thinks. Yes, the guy has another girlfriend, but she still thinks that's her. So she's dealing with somebody that's double, that's double dipping, basically. Like there's a double. Wow. Her husband? Jesus. So her husband has a girlfriend. That explains it. So remember when I remember when God led me to say that he was not physically abusing her but there was an affliction that was the first thing that came up there was an affliction of her but it was emotional i sh should have just stuck with that sometimes i expand it to just make sure i'm casting the the widest net that i can if the circumstance requires it but the but god is always accurate i really don't even ever have to do that but we're having fun <laughs> but no that's what god said at first god said that God showed me double affliction, hurt, wounds, but it wasn't a physical, it was emotional. And that explains the double, the double woman that he had. And the fact that he wasn't beating her, but that, that's an emotional wound. Cheating is, is, is a lack of loyalty. It's, it's an emotional wound. You say, yes, yeah, she says that God has revealed to her that he is her husband. Oh, she thinks, oh, okay, she thinks he is her husband. Okay. But anyway, this man that she has a relationship with. So I decree and I declare, I don't even know this woman, but Charlene, you're connected to the ministry. We're a, we're a family here. I decree and I declare over your friend that she will not be disillusioned. She will not believe a lie. She will not get herself into a stronghold by believing a lie. She will step into the truth and avoid painting a picture that is inaccurate just because she's trying to save herself from pain is what I was trying to get to. Because that's what that came up in the word earlier. You said touching and agreeing. Yes, we touch and we agree. Thank you, DJ. We touch and we agree. Oftentimes we hold on to relationships because we're trying to avoid the pain that we think will come as a result of letting it go. Now I know I talk about letting go a lot because God has called me to do that, but some people do need to reestablish their bonds with people. I want to just equally, I just want to say that equally. But if it's wrong, you need to let it go. And this, this sounds wrong. Jesus, Charlene, you are going to take that trip. Now I'm saying popsicles. <laughs> yes, Jesus. And Jesus could just be telling me to like cool down the atmosphere. Like to make sure it doesn't take a turn that we weren't, you know, like we didn't mean you talk about all that. <laughs> all the other stuff. But for this woman in particular, that's what it was about. Jesus. I love those hearts. Thank you. Anything else for Charlene Father before we move on to Sandy for her prophecy? Whatever you might be willing to impart to Sandy. God has said that your, your grandmother, there's like a matriarch in your family that, and I saw three. It's interesting. And this might sound like a, a creepy kind of vision, but I saw a grandmother, your grandmother, 
And God showed me like bird hands. Like, you know how birds say sometimes one little hand looks like you got three, <laughs> like three hands. Sometimes I'm envisioning, I'm, I'm envisioning like that. But you know how sometimes birds will have the hands, but it looks like real kind of shrinky. But I saw your grandmother in the spirit, Charlene. God told me it was your grandmother. And God showed me those three extensions from her. Three hands. I don't know if your grandmother had three gifts of the spirit, three daughters, three something, but her, she, I literally saw her, I think she personally came through. I really do. And I've had that happen in other instances with people. I remember I was sitting next to a colleague. I believe this was not this year. It was last year. And I said, I keep hearing the name Rose. I had just met this woman. She had just joined our team. I was, we were just bowling for like, you know, community, like a builder thing, like a team builder. We were bowling in Rosemont. And I said, I keep hearing the name Rose. And she just started crying. I just, I was like, why is she crying? She said, my grandmother used to call me that. My grandmother used to call me that. I was like, wow. And so every time I see her, we always, now she still is at the job, I always think about that. The day that her grandmother came to me in the spirit. And it was like strong, 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 like rose. Like she was yelling out at the young lady who was sitting next to me. You said, I don't know much about my grandmother's. You have a grandmother in the spirit. Do you? Know, I know you said you don't know about your grandmother, but do do you know why the why three came up concerning her? Like, does she have three daughter daughter three daughters in particular? Grandmother, three daughters, three some some about three, and I get the sense that it has something to do with three spirits, three gifts, three daughters. Mm. But anyway, I, I really do. I'll, I'll wait for that. But I really do get the sense that a grandmother came forth through you. I think the reason why that came forth for you is for you to know that you have ancestors in the spirit realm that are still touching your life. They're still touching you. Even from heaven. Because, you know, birds fly high like heaven. And God let me know that it was a woman, your grandmother but gave me the, the sense of bird uh, legs casting out three different angles from the leg. And that's a heavenly realm. You're being touched. I'm going to decree and declare this right now because I saw it. You, and I believe three, she's got hands on three people on the earth. A grandmother of yours, your grandmother. And I'm not just going to say any old grandmother. I'm talking about, I believe this is like your mother's mother. Your grandmother has hands on three specific beings on the earth. And since this came up in your prophecy, that's for you. And she just wanted to let that be known. God permitted that to be known. Hands. And I saw serious hands. I didn't see her like smiling. I saw her looking down. And like touch, like like cut like a covering over three specific. And again, you are one. Jesus. And I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of her, but I for some reason I did see like a, a curly black and gray, like short fro type of hairdo. It's like another layer of that vision, like another identifier for that vision. Woman of God, please know that you've got heavenly touches upon your life. Not only do you, that's interesting because God first showed me the angel for you. And then God is completing your prophecy for tonight with the vision of your grandmother. Tall. I'm talking, I don't know if I've said that, but like very big, very tall, like a giant in the spirit. 
touching down upon you all, you three. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Maybe you want to start communicating. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you in the proper way. Communicate and pray to him. And then if it is the will of God, yes, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, yes. And if it is the will of God, open up that conversation with your ancestors to carry you, woman of God, because you are not alone. You have your church. You have your woman of God. You have the word of God upon you. You have God himself. You have angels distributed to you, one in particular that I saw. And you have your grandmother. I know that. Be filled up in your heart. And God is saying, and know that I am God. God is saying that for himself, not me. I am a God, but God is God. God is the God. Jesus. Sandy, when I looked at your picture, God said, new lover. Hey, Lucretia. God said, new lover. Sandy, you seeing somebody new? <laughs> Sandy, are you considering new love? Are you? Do you have like a, a new inspiration for love? Glory to God, Charlene, loved your prophecy. <laughs> DJ Cameron. Yeah, I'm looking at Sandy. I don't know if Sandy is still here. I believe she may still be here on Facebook. God said, new love. Yep, Sandy, let us know if that's been on your heart. If you got an, uh, an offer for love. No? Well, if not, God wants that to be on your heart. New love. You should decree that because if God is decreeing that, you should. And I also, God has wanted me to ask you, are you a receiver of love? Are you a receiver of new love? Are you willing to be a receiver of new love? Are you willing? Because that came across very strongly. New love. Have you closed your heart, woman of God? Off from a relationship? And I'll discern more in the spirit. God, why did you say new love for her? I I keep, you say yes. You stop, you start receiving. Yep. God wants you to know that new love is possible for you. If you develop yourself as a receiver, glory to God, those hearts. Thank you so much for filling up the atmosphere with those beautiful hearts. God said new love for you. God is saying build the structure for new love to enter your life. Because I saw in the spirit when I asked God, I'm like, God, why did you say that immediately? I saw a man with like little black hair, like twisted hair. Now, the vision may not make sense to you, but to me, God let me see a man in the spirit. <laughs> and he was dark complexed. Mature in age, but he had interesting hair, like black twists hair, black twists in his hair. Now, you may know someone that looks like that. You may not. You say, well, it's not me, Ola. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> but yes, God let me know for sure to stick with the prophecy because he showed me a man. A man. And you said you closed your heart. You closed your heart to love. And I get the sense, you said, just kidding, adding humor. I love that. <laughs> and this man's name could start with a K. It's interesting. I prophesied to a woman and I said, uh, your husband's name is going to have a J in it. And... She's like, yeah, I'm about to marry a junior. <laughs> like after all, like decades of singlehood, 
all of that. So I decree and I declare whatever, whatever man God is trying to get to you, woman of God, I decree and I declare you will be a receiver of whatever God has for you, even if it's unexpected. God is now telling me that you've been laboring and laboring and laboring. Like you've had, particularly recently, you've been working very hard. As I look at your picture, God is communicating that to me. You've been working very hard. Now, I get the sense that you you worked like in your life, but something about something recent, like the, the layers of work, the, the load, the, the, the labor, And God has simply said you've been working very hard. Now, Sandy, God is God is asking me to ask you, do you have a question? God is wanting you to ask him a question because God is making me feel like you already have something in your heart that you want to ask. And God is just opening up the floor and saying, yes, ask it. You said amen. Yes, and so that so the, the hard work. Glory to God. Yes, DJ. Thank you for your continual support to our saints. All of it is so valuable. Sandy, think about something that you have been wanting to add. And I don't feel like you'll have to think very hard about it. You said, my husband and I are separated. That's why God said new love. Interestingly, new. And what question do you have, Sandy? Because God let me know that you had a... God let me know that you had a question, but God said, ask the question. So Sandy and her husband are separated. Jesus. Because what will happen is, when God receives the question that he knows is there, he'll likely continue on. It's like a breadcrumb. Like he'll impart a little, and he'll see if you're receptive, and then he'll part, he'll impart more. Yeah, you and your husband are separated. Wow, yep, that explains it. New love. Be a receiver, Sandy. It's not over for you. It's not over for you, Sandy. In the area of love, I guarantee you that. If you build yourself up as a receiver, and you allow yourself and you decree, I am a receiver, and not only that, I am a receiver of love, watch God show out in your life. But think about that, Sandy. Okay. Father God, Sandy is asking us, will her marriage be restored? God showed me a crown, like a king, a king-like crown. But he didn't show me the accompanying tiara, you know, queenly crown. He showed me the king's crown by itself. And then God mentioned six children. And God is saying with those children, it could just be from his side. It could be your side. It could be, I mean, like his side and your side together. It could just be his side, something. But God mentioned six kids. God mentioned a territorial anointing upon him. So I don't know if he, if this man has a increased in real estate. But when you mention him, God showed me a, a king's crown. So I don't know if this is like a businessman or something, but this man has increased. Or 
had been established as like a uh, like a high ranking man in, in some capacity. And God also showed, showed me territorial territorial anointing upon this man. And God wants to impart one more detail before before we ask you: Is any of this making sense? And God is saying he had been reaching for like higher realms of, he said consciousness, higher realms of consciousness. So the, the this male had been reaching, reaching. Is this, is any of this, any of these details making any sense about the man that, that uh, you have parted ways from? A kingly anointing. I don't know if this man was involved in the church. Because he came forth as having some type of anointing upon him. Particularly, again, I saw the crown and then I saw territory. And territory is uh, usually related to land. You say, yes. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. See, you see, I would not know that. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, without the power of God, Sandy, right now, live at 1.48 a.m. on September 10th, Monday morning, you are getting your own prophecy for the first time, woman of God. Charlene was a friend. She got a prophecy. She pulled you in. Now, look, you're, you are hearing the voice of God upon your life right now. I have never seen a picture of your face. Never. I don't even, I think this is just like a, a, a pink purplish, like a profile something. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm not seeing anything related. I can't even see a picture of your face to get this information from the Holy Spirit for more impression. This is just pure without the added visual of your picture. Okay. Even if I had the picture, that'd still be pure. But what I'm saying is even with less information, the power of God can still move. You said my husband and I were own owners of a semi truck. Yep. This was a businessman. And you see this, like when, when a woman says, oh my, all she said was, my husband and I are separated. I didn't know anything about this man either. But for God to show me a king, a crown, and a ter and said territorial anointing, I knew that something about this man, he is serious. In the spirit, in, in some lane of the spirit, he's very serious. He's anointed. He's anointed. That is an anointed man for a particular purpose. And you are anointed too, woman of God. But God is feeding me a lot upon him right now. Now God says seven years. Does seven years make sense for you? Did you all venture on something for seven years? Were together, married seven, married particularly seven years? Because uh, God mentioned seven years. Maybe y'all had trouble for the past seven years, but you'll you'll likely know what that seven years is all about. But the question, Father, is I, I when you asked that question, I saw his crown alone. I didn't see it paired. Now I was waiting to just see, and I'm still gonna wait and see if God will allow us to discern more. But I did see his crown alone. You said marriage for seven years. Glory to God. Married seven years. The power of God moves so strongly in Aaliyah Connect Ministries, our ministry. You say, yes, we are still married. Do you see the specificity of God, Sandy? God says seven years. And of course, the first thing, have y'all been married seven years? And then I'll start expanding. 
But always stick with the first thing. That's just your woman of God. Because remember, I'm limited without God. With God, though, what he says is the bomb. Dang, Jesus. Thank you. Y'all see that? On Periscope? Jesus. Prophetic anointing. I have to pause and give God glory for that. Because woman of God, for the rest of your life, if you ever doubt it, glory to God, DJ, if you ever doubted the presence of God, never doubt the presence of God after this, and, I'm, and God is saying, you don't even have to say that to her, but I just have to say this for anyone watching, never doubt the presence of God, never doubt the presence, never doubt the fact that God is still birthing and moving with his prophets. Because uh, I believe even Yita said that she was taught that there were no more prophets. That is a lie. That is a lie. God has decided to place his hand upon me as his prophet. And we can see this happening right now live in our live demonstration of his power. Jesus, you all were married for seven years. God said, do not go back to his selfish ways. Do not go back to his selfish ways. God is giving me the sense that, uh, hold on, is Periscope still on? God is giving me the sense that he like took food out of your mouth. God showed me that. And I know that might sound strange, different, but I saw juice, like a juice taken from you. Like you were drinking something and then he like took it. Like, give me that. Like he's mean spirited. You said we're here. Okay. Right. Like I saw that. Like mean. Was this a, is this a mean man? Because God showed me you all in the car. You mind your own business drinking something and him snatching it out of your hand. Like give me this. Like he didn't care about your thirst. He didn't care about your thirst, woman of God. It was about him. It was about what he wanted. That's not, that's not the, that's not the normal characteristics of, of like a real sacrificial, like a real man. A man, just like a mother, a man will make sure that his wife is fully hydrated, fully taken care of. Fully taken care of. So you're saying he's not selfish, but something. I don't know if that vision makes sense to you, but it made sense to God. God said, don't go back to his selfish ways. So think about that. And I don't want to force that on you or whatever, but I'm going to stick with what God said. You say he just involved with another woman? That's, that's a characteristic of selfishness, too. It really is. But, I, but I'm going to stick with what God said. And, I, and maybe you'll just think about this a little later. But God called him selfish. And, of course, when you're with a person for a long time, you may not, you know, maybe see something like how a person will with, like, a fresh, fresh set of eyes, fresh perspective. But you said that he is a cheat, like he, you say he just involved with another woman. That's not a just, that's a big thing. He just involved with another woman. No, that's not a just. That's serious. That is an indication of the fact that he don't care about maintaining and sustaining trust and feeding you. It's the reason why God showed me that vision of, of the taking of what was in your mouth. A nurturing, a nur something that was nurturing you and him taking it upon himself. Sometimes the visions are explicit. Sometimes they are spiritual. But as a woman, as a woman of God, together as women of God, we're going to agree on this right now. The word just should never be in front of somebody cheating. You said, I know that. Very selfish. So are you? Yeah. 
So do you see the selfishness or are you still what you what you think you're saying? Because I'm I'm gonna stick with God on this one. <laughs> you said don't go back to his selfish ways. That's the clear crisp line that I received. Don't go back to his selfish ways. Sandy, I don't know if you have three sisters, but there, God mentioned three sisters. Now that could mean three women in your life. God, why don't you mention these women? Glory to God as we honor you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Jesus. Jesus, y'all. I hope y'all being fed tonight, seeing the power of God move upon us. Glory to God. You said, of course, he is very selfish. Okay. I thought you said he wasn't. <laughs> I'm like, what? You said, yes. I know we're going to sleep soon. We're going to go to sleep soon. And believe it or not, I still have things to do tonight. <laughs> this has been a very busy day. Uh, but yes. Yes. Glory to God. Uh, Jesus. God is like telling me, slide on with them. Like slide. Okay, so she is saying he's very selfish. Of course, he is very selfish. Okay, because I saw a comment come up as no, and I didn't know what that was. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he is selfish. God said he's selfish. So you're confirming. You know, several things came up that were accurate about Sandy's prophecy. Several things came up that were accurate about Sandy's prophecy. Uh the king-like anointing on her husband, the territorial anointing, and how she mentioned they have a business of semi-trucks. God let me see a territorial anointing upon him. God let me see that they were together for seven years, married seven years. God said seven years. And then God said, don't tell her, told me to tell her not to go back to his selfish ways. And then God just told me she had three sisters. And look, she says, I have three sisters. Whoa, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for revealing yourself tonight, Jesus. Someone shout glory. Right, DJ? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just spontaneously, God just dropped into my spirit. Three sisters. Three sisters. You see that? Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus, I have three sisters is what she's saying right here on Facebook Live. Never. Woman of God, man of God. Please, in your own personal life, if you are watching this live, if you are watching a replay, if you're watching this tomorrow, it's September 10th, 2018. If you're watching this on the 11th, if you're watching this, Jesus, and you said your fourth sister passed away January 16th, 2018, that might be another reason why God mentioned sisters, Jesus. Oh, I'm so sorry that your sister passed. Oh, Jesus, never doubt the realness of Jesus, the realness of the Holy Spirit, the realness of the Father, and that they are the most high God. If Jesus is not your God, you're not following God. If Jesus is not your God, you're not following the true Messiah, the true God. You need Jesus. This is a Jesus, Holy Spirit filled woman coming before you. And I decree and I declare I am a prophet of this time. Just as Jesus announced himself as king on that special evening, excuse me, that special day, 173,000 years after the angel Gabriel prophesied to Daniel and Daniel wrote it in the Old Testament and Jesus showed up exactly and announced himself as king exactly 173,000 days later. God told me to announce myself as queen, as princess in this time. Queen, princess in this time. A prophet of God, a real life 
prophet of God that you can believe, that you can depend on. I didn't know why God told me to do this. He said, before you get off the broadcast, make sure you announce yourself as princess, as queen. And I said, okay. But as I'm seeing the power of God move, God had me dress a certain way today. God made me get this dress today. God has fully taken me over. My look, my attitude, my seriousness, my joyfulness, my virtue, my sanctification. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Manny. Proverbs 31, Manny. My eyes, my smile, my, my discernment. People don't have to tell me a thing and I will know because God has called me to know. I announced myself again, but this time as queen of this time, of this generation. God's queen for us. God's princess for us. His prophetic anointing is showing up very strong. And I'm going to obey his divine instruction to announce myself as that. Watch the power of God move continually. For the purpose of developing your relationship with Jesus. For the purpose of you pointing people to Jesus. Saying, look at what God is doing over there. That Jesus filled woman right there. Look at what God is doing through her. Jesus is real. Jesus is making himself known in these days. And not only that, Jesus is not just saying, hey, me over here. Jesus would never do that. Jesus is a powerful God. But I'm just saying that just so that it's clear. Jesus is calling you onto him. Jesus is not just calling attention to himself. He's calling you onto him. For you, for your family, for your lineage. When we die, we need to leave a legacy of seeds sown. We need to leave a legacy of wisdom. We need to instill value in our children that everything they need to know about living in this earth is in the Bible. They shouldn't have to wait until they're in their late 20s, 30s, 40s, until they're lost, until they're sick, until they're unemployed, until they're homeless, until they are in wrong relationships, until they're beaten down and depressed, cheated on, abused, spit on, strangled, and, 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 and walked all over by the devil to realize that the truth is in the Bible. Everything that will prosper them is in the Bible. I decree and I declare with my mouth that God's prophet is here and he ain't going nowhere so long as I live. And we're going to watch this power of God keep moving in the name of Jesus. Take whatever is in your heart right now, in your gut, in your belly that you need to release and you're going to release that thing. Nothing's holding you back any longer. Man of God, woman of God. No sorrow, no loneliness. You're going to get out there. You're going to take that road trip. Woman of God. I say that with love, but I'm saying that as a, as a bold decree. Charlene, you are going to go and commune with the woman who's also being cheated on. You are going to have the fearless and boldness of God the attitude of God as you go and commune with the woman who needs you. Because she needs the anointing and the fire of God that you are experiencing through your church. The infilling through your church, woman of God. I burn everything that is causing you to have a diseased life in your body, in your relationships, in your stagnation, in anything in your mind. I burn that thing. I break that thing. I break that thing. You are refreshed, renewed, and healed. You are free. And with that said, we're going to end this tonight. Charlene says, yes, glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. Share this broadcast. Make sure you don't keep this blessing to yourself. Don't disappoint God. Get your seed in the ground. Start that relationship with God through your seed if you've never done that. Don't let, the, don't let the enemy come for you in the courts of heaven and say, look, that person doesn't even respect you. That person doesn't even fear you. That person doesn't even love you enough to honor you with a seed. If you ain't never been a sower, 
get to soul, y'all. Show God who you are in the spirit. Get your friendships in the spirit through your seed. Get Jesus working for you as your seed. Everything ugly in the spirit realm will be broken through your seed because Jesus manifests as your seed. Don't delay. Don't let the enemy steal your seed. Jesus. Jesus. Woo! Power of God. Okay, let me put this back up one more time. Make sure you get to someone. Make sure you get to someone. Seriously. All right? Take that snapshot. And you guys, glory to God. Let's go to sleep. Let's get us some good, good rest. And um, peace be with you all. All right? Have a good night. I'll see you next week by the will of God. Bye-bye.